Our learning target is that you will be able to use the Pythagorean theorem to solve real world problems, and you will show this by correctly solving three of these problems. Okay, I don't need you to write these down in your notes. I just need you to um, write down the pictures I do and the, the work that I do as well. So just follow along as I read, please. Claire wants to hang a banner from the sill of a second story window in her house. She needs to find a ladder that when rested against the outside wall of her house will be long enough to reach the second story window. If the window is 16 feet above the ground and Claire places the foot of the ladder 12 feet from the wall, how long will the ladder need to be? So the very first thing I want you to do with any of these word problems is draw the picture. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything fancy, just a real basic. So I have our house that is two stories tall. She wants it to be long enough to reach the second story window, and the window is 16 feet up. So we want to go 16 feet up to the second story window. Claire places the foot of the ladder 12 feet from the wall. So 12 feet out is where the base of the ladder is going to be. Now, that kind of depends on how steep you want this ladder to be. Maybe that's the only flat spot that's safe to put the ladder. And then the ladder is going to be leaning against it here. And that's the one that I'm trying to figure out. So as we look at this, we're going to assume that these corners are right angles. Hopefully a building in the ground is at a nice 90 degree angle. So I have a right triangle here. If you want, after drawing the picture, you can certainly redraw just the triangle part of it. The side across from the right angle is going to be our C, our two legs off the uh, right angle, and on the L shape over here are the A and the B. We're plugging this into A squared plus B squared equals C squared, which is our Pythagorean theorem that's usually given to you. It's not something you have to memorize. A is 12, so 12 squared. B is 16, 16 squared. And C is what I'm looking for, so that can stay. 12 squared is 144. 16 squared is 256. These are on the same side with a plus sign in between them, so I can just go ahead and add them. Now, I want to get rid of the square, so I always want to do the opposite. Like, right, um, we haven't done one yet, but if I wanted to get rid of adding, I would do the opposite and subtract. So to get rid of a square, I'm going to do the opposite, which is the square root. Because the square and the square root are going to cancel each other out. And that's going to leave just the C by itself. However, I can't just do it to one side. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to both sides. The square root of 400, we can type it into our calculator, but that is one of our perfect squares, and it's going to come out to a nice even 20. Now, we need to go back and make sure that we're answering the question. The question was, how long will the ladder need to be? And 20 is not quite enough of an answer. Is that 20 inches, 20 meters, 20 feet? And as I look through the story, it is 16 feet above, 12 feet from, so this is feet. So the ladder will need to be 20 feet long. During a baseball game, the second baseman gets the ball and throws it to the catcher to stop a runner before he gets to home. So here's a little picture to remind you of a baseball diamond. So the second baseman got the ball and is going to throw it back to the catcher before somebody from third base makes it to home base. So they're throwing the ball from here to there. If it's 90 feet between each of the bases, how far did the second baseman throw the ball? So we are looking for that distance from second to home. We know that from home to first base is 90 feet. 
And then it said each of the bases, so we also know from first base to second base is 90 feet. And then in the baseball diamond here, this is a nice right angle. I'm going to redraw it just to help us visualize just the triangle aspect of it. The side across from the right angle is our hypotenuse, our C. The other two are the A and the B, and in this case, it definitely doesn't matter which one's A and B because they're both 90. We're putting it into A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Both A and B are going to be 90s. Ninety squared means ninety times ninety on both of those. We're going to add them together then. And then we're going to take the square root of that. Because to get rid of the square, we want to do the opposite, and I want to do it to both sides. Square and square root cancel each other out, leaving the C. Square root of 16,200. This one is not a perfect square, so I'm going to type the whole thing, or write the whole thing out here. It's irrational, goes on forever, never ends, never repeats. But to get my answer, I am going to round it. So if the problem doesn't state, you can choose where to round it, and I think we'd like to round it to the whole feet. So 127, that is not big enough to round up, so 127. I do want to include my units on there. My units are feet. And I'd just like you to check your answer to make sure it's reasonable by making sure the hypotenuse is longer than the other two sides. So 127 is longer than both the 90 and the 90. So that works. Uh, how far did the second baseman throw the ball? 127 feet. A water park wants to add a zip line into a pool. Here's a picture of a zip line. It's those wires that you hang on to when you go sliding down into the water. If the platform at the top of the zip line is 25 feet tall and the pool is 40 feet long, what is the maximum length needed for the zip line? Okay, so we're going to start by drawing our picture. We've got a pool. And then we've got a tower that you're going to be zip lining down from. Now it says, what's the maximum length? So the maximum length would be going from that tower right to the end of the pool. Of course, that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense because you'd be slamming right into that uh, edge of the pool. So that's why it's a maximum length. We'd probably want something shorter than that. Putting our numbers in, the tower is 25 feet. The pool is 40 feet long. And I'm looking for how long the zip line should be. We're plugging into a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Again, we're going to assume that the tower and the pool make a 90 degree angle. So what is the letter that's missing here? Is it a, b, or c? The one across from the right angle is going to be our c. The other two, our legs, are going to be the a and the b. And it doesn't matter which one you call which. Putting in for the A is 40, so that's 40 squared. Putting in the B for 25, 25 squared, and I'm going to leave the C squared alone. 40 squared is 40 times 40. 25 squared. These are on the same side of the equal sign, so I'm just going to go ahead and add them. Opposite of square is the square root on both sides. Square and square root cancel each other out, leaving the C. Square root of 2,225 
is an irrational number, so I'm going to write out what I'm seeing. And then I'm going to round my answer. Um, since these are whole numbers, I'm going to round this one to the whole number. 47, that is not enough to round up, so 47. And then we're talking about feet. I'd like you to just check your answer to make sure the hypotenuse is the longest side. So 47 is longer than both the 40 and the 25. A wheelchair ramp is needed at the entrance to a building. The ramp is needed to climb a height of three feet. There's only 10 feet of space available for the ramp. How long should the ramp be? So the ramp needs to go up three feet. There is only 10 feet of space available for it. So then the question is, how long should the ramp be? So go ahead and please label the A, B, and C. See if you can put it into the Pythagorean theorem, which I'll write down in just a second here, and then see if you can solve it. I'd like your answer rounded to the tenth, so one decimal place over. The 3 and the 10 are A and are B. So putting those in, 3 squared is 9, 10 squared is 100. Adding them together, we get 109. Opposite of square is the square root, which we have to do to both sides. Square and square root cancel each other out, leaving the C. And then typing in the square root of 109, That's everything I see on the calculator. I asked you to go to the tenths place or one decimal place, so that would be this four. I'm going to look behind it. That is not large enough to round. We're looking for five or larger. So this would be 10.4, and we're still talking about feet. And then we just want to make sure that the hypotenuse, the C, the 10.4, is bigger than both of the other two. So yes, 10.4 is bigger than three, and 10.4 is bigger than 10. A television screen is advertised as 50 inches. If the television is 35 inches wide, how tall is it? Now the thing that you need to know is that television screens, when they tell you that it's 50 inches, that is actually the diagonal or the hypotenuse here. Uh, that picture is a little dark, so I'm going to redraw it here. So I know that the TV is advertised as 50 inches, which is the diagonal. And I know that it's 35 inches wide. I'm looking for how tall this is going to be. 
Okay, this is the different format. There's the two ways to do the Pythagorean theorem or the two methods of solving it. The one is when the two numbers are on the same side and we just add them like we did last time. On this one, the numbers are going to end up on different sides, so we're going to do it slightly differently. The one across from the right angle, the longest side, the hypotenuse, is our C. We have our A and our B. We're plugging it into A squared plus B squared equals C squared. I'm not sure what the A is, so I'm going to leave the letter A squared. The B is 35. And our C is 50. So notice that the 35 is on the left side, the 50 is on the right side of the equal sign. Leave your A squared there. 35 squared is 35 times 35, which is 1,225. And 50 times 50 is 2,500. Okay, I want to get the variable by itself, so I want to do the opposite of adding 1,225. The opposite of adding it would be subtracting 1,225 from both sides. Twenty five hundred minus twelve hundred twenty five gives us one thousand two hundred seventy five. I want to get rid of the square. The opposite of the square is the square root, which I'm going to do to both sides. Square and the square root cancel each other out, leaving the a. And then I'm going to do the square root of one thousand two hundred seventy five. So notice this last step is the same. I'm going to round off to the whole inch. And again, that's just my choice. So with a 5, I'm going to look to the number behind it. Because it is 5 or larger, I'm going to round up. 36, using my units, which is inches. So this TV is 35 wide and 36 high. And that gives me the diagonal of 50 inches. And I just want to make sure that that A and that B are both smaller than the 50, which they are. A kite at the end of a 40-foot line is 10 feet behind the runner. How high is the kite? So here's a little picture in case you're not familiar with the kite running. So we're going to ignore the fact that the kite starts a bit higher than the ground. For our purposes, we're just going to say that the kite is at the ground. But notice that usually you do hold it rather high. So a kite is at the end of a 40-foot line and is 10 feet behind the runner. So I'm saying along the ground, it is 10 feet. So I'd like to know how high the kite is off the ground. I'd like you to try giving the A, the B, and the C in the picture. I'd like you to plug them into the Pythagorean theorem and see how far you can get on solving it, please.
our hypotenuse, our longest side, the C is going to be the 40. The A and the B are the 10 and the unknown. 10 squared is 100, 40 squared is 1,600. I want to do the opposite of adding the 100, so I subtract the 100 from both sides. I want to do the opposite of the square, which is the square root on both sides. Type the whole thing out, and this is what I get. Now, I did not specify to you where I wanted you to round. So one possible answer, if I went to the whole number, I looked to the one behind it, because that is 5 or larger, I would round up. So 39 feet is a fine answer. If you chose to go one decimal place, the 2 is not large enough to round up, so that would be 38.7 feet. And then I want to make sure that either of those answers is less than 40, and um, right around with the 10. So the 38.7 and the 39 are both less than 40. And what this means is how high the kite is. So the kite is about 39 feet in the air. Okay, here is our last one. A roof is being placed on a frame that is 9 feet tall and 30 feet wide. How long are the diagonal pieces of the frame? Now as we draw this one, or as we look at the picture here, you're going to see that there is one little catch to this one. We don't have a right triangle to start. Our height is 9 feet, and the width of this frame is 30. Well, I want to use a right triangle. So if I look just at the one half of it, I do have a right triangle that's 9. This is the one I'm looking for, but I need to know this. So then what I need to think about is that if it's 30 all the way across, this half right here would be 15. So go ahead and plug this in. We're going to use that our unknown is the C, the 15 is our A, and the 9 is our B. See if you can put it in the right spot, solve it, and I believe you should get a whole number for this answer. Okay, I was mistaken. I was thinking about the one where the 15 would be the hypotenuse. That would work out to a whole number. This one gives us another irrational. When we added them together, we got 306. Type in the square root of 306. Um, I'm going to round off to the whole. So 17, the 4 is not large enough to round off, so that is 17 feet. So the diagonal piece would have to be 17 feet. And we just want to make sure that that's longer than both the 15 and the 9, which it is.